Thanks for joining us, and happy Father's Day to all of you wonderful dads out there. Today we have a special guest, Matt Keller from Next Level Church. He'll be teaching us about our donkey mission. God has a bigger story for all of us, but as long as we're faithful with the little things, God will be faithful with the bigger things. This is a great and challenging message, and I pray that it builds your faith and inspires you to change the way you think. It is a privilege to be here with you to minister the Word of God to you today. Turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. Turn or click with me, uh, all you tech-savvy kids out there. 1 Samuel chapter 9 is where I want us to, to live today because I want to talk through a concept that I believe is going to be relevant to each and every one of us who are listening today because at times in our life we find ourselves on a special assignment from the Lord. And so that's what I want us to talk about. And the person we're going to look at today is Old Testament Saul. Everyone say Saul. Saul is kind of the, the main character of our story. Let's begin reading. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 says this. There was a Benjamite, a man of standing, whose name was Kish, son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Becherath, the son of another name of Benjamin. <laughs> verse 2. Kish had a son named Saul. There he is. There's our main character. Kish had a son named Saul. As handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel. And look what it says. He was a head taller than anyone else. So here's what we need to know about our guy Saul. He was something special. God had his hand on Saul for a special work. He was head and shoulders taller, the Bible says, than anybody else in the whole country. He was special. And listen, Res Life, I believe God brought me here to West Michigan today with this message to tell you. You are something special. God's got his hand on you. Do you believe that? You are something special. Come on, turn to the person you're sitting next to. Just kind of pat them on the, on the leg or touch them in the shoulder and say, hey, you're something special. Come on, tell them. You're something special. You're something special. Some of you, you forgot that. You've forgotten that, and you need to know, because today we're going to talk to people who's got, who God has his hand on for something special. And that was our guy, Saul. The Bible says he was a head taller. And those of you who are familiar with Bible history, those of you who are familiar with Bible study uh, for any period of time, you know that Saul really was something special, that God had his hand on Saul to become the first king over the nation of Israel. Well, that's a big deal. The think of it. There's nothing like the first, is there? And God had his hand on Saul. God was about to choose Saul to become the first king king over, not just any nation, over God's people, Israel in the Old Testament. Like, that, how awesome is that? Like, he was the George Washington of the nation of Israel, of God's people. Like, put my man on a quarter. Like, that's awesome. But before Saul became King Saul, before Saul became Mr. Awesome, Mr. Leader of God's people, Mr. George Washington, right? The first king over Israel. Before Saul was chosen for something great, he had to go on a special mission. And that's what I want us to see. Look at verse 3. Now, the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son, Saul, Take one of the servants with you and go and look for the donkeys. So what's happening? Saul's dad, Kish, lost some animals. And not just any animals. He didn't lose horses. No, no, no. He lost donkeys. And so what does he do? He calls his son in. He says, hey, come here, come here, come here. Saul, come here. Okay, here's the deal. I lost a few donkeys. And I'm really ticked off about it. So I need you to go grab one of our servants, and you guys go and find my donkeys. Now here's the thing. Imagine being Saul. Like, your dad calls you over, hey, I got, I got a project for you. Yeah, yeah, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, can you go find my donkeys? Seriously? What? Okay, what time out, like, do you... Have you seen me? Like, I'm like a linebacker. Like, I'm awesome. Like, like God's hand is on me. Like, I'm something special, Daddy-o. 
And you want me to go look for your donkeys? Serious? Question. Anybody ever been on a donkey mission before? Come on, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? A donkey mission. I know I have. I know throughout my 40, almost 43 years of existence, I have been in over 25 years of serving Jesus. I know that I have been on so many donkey missions. They're hard, aren't they? Donkey missions are frustrating, aren't they? You know what I'm talking about. You're tracking on your career path. Everything's going fine. You're in your comfort zone. Everything's great. And then the boss calls you in and says, hey, one of the guys in our far off territory just resigned. I need you to move to Albuquerque. I need you to move to Allendale. There, that hit. <laughs> Ever been on a donkey mission? Come on, moms. You know what I'm talking about. The dream of having children and then diapers. Forever endless diapers. We have two boys, Will and Drew. They're 17 and 15 now. They're here sitting next to my wife, Sarah, right here. Raise your hand, guys. There's my sons right there. And uh, yeah, give it up for Will and Drew. Awesome. Love that. They love that. Unbelievable. But, you know, it's, it's, it, people ask me oftentimes about parenting. They're like, man, in, you know, new parents young, with young, you know, little kids. And they're like, any advice for parenting? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I got like zero to five. Like I blacked it out. Like I, hold your breath. That's all I got. That's all I got. Hold your breath. That's all I got. Donkey missions, right? I remember uh, being a teenager when I was 15 years old. I gave my life to Christ in uh, an Easter musical at our church in Indiana, a small town in northeast Indiana, Auburn, Indiana, just north of Fort Wayne. And I went to, was invited by my, my now wife, Sarah, but then girlfriend, she invited me. She said, hey, you got to come. We're putting on this Easter musical. And so I went to this Easter musical, and I saw Jesus die on the cross and was put, buried in the tomb and the fog machine and resurrected the whole deal. And then the pastor, her dad, came out at the end and he, you know, said, hey, listen, this is not just a good story. This actually happened. And if you want to say yes to a relationship with Jesus, you know, raise your hand. And I remember where I was sitting, second row back, second seat in. And I lifted my hand that Friday night and I received Christ as my Savior. Three months later, I went to a youth camp, turned 16, went to a youth camp and felt called to ministry, called to be a leader in my generation, called to preach, called to pastor. And so after summer camp, I remember coming home to my pastor, my now father-in-law, but then, you know, my girlfriend's dad, my pastor, and I sat down, made an appointment, sat down in his office, and I said, Pastor, God called me to preach. What do I do now? And he looked at me and he said, well, Matt, this is great. There is a middle school boys Sunday school class that meets not in the church, but out back of the church in the trailer." every Sunday during the school of the Bible, the Sunday school hour. Would you be willing to go and teach those kids? <sighs> yeah, I am your guy. And so I remember getting all ready, and I had my Dakes, you know, Greek and Hebrew study Bible, and I put on my best six-button Kmart suit. Come on, this was the early 90s. Anybody remember that? I put on my, that's what you had to suit up, bro, when you go to church, because you're just the Word of God. And so I would suit up, and I suited up. The suit was like three sizes too big, and I went strolling out back to this 1970s trailer that smelled like mildew and teenage boy funk. You know what I'm talking about? And I walked in, and there's like this huge, like, blood of Jesus red carpet, shag carpet. And when I walked in, there were eight middle school boys sitting on metal chairs like this. With a look on their face that said, the only reason we're here is because our parents woke us up and made us come. Donkey mission. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, a donkey mission. I remember when we moved to, to Southwest Florida 16 years ago to start Next Level Church, the church we pastor and lead today. And I remember we moved there. God had put a big dream in our heart for crying out loud. We named our church Next Level Church, right? And we get down there, and when we start, well, first of all, when we went to our, our overseers uh, in Fort Wayne, the fellowship we were a part of, and we told them God had put a vision in our heart to plant a church in Fort Myers, Florida. 
They gave us the y'all go ahead treatment. Anybody know what that is? Y'all go ahead. The Apostle Paul said we extended the right hand of fellowship. We got the left foot of fellowship. Y'all go ahead. Don't call us. We'll call you kind of thing. So we were on our own with $9,200, which is not a lot of money to start a church, even 16 years ago, back in my day. Not a lot of money. And I remember when we moved to Southwest Florida, knew nobody, and it was like, well, we got to pay our bills. And so we decided that Sarah would stay home with our one son, Will. We have two now, but one son at the time, our 19-month-old son. And so I went to work. The only people that would hire me with nothing but ministry experience on my resume, the only people that would hire me were some jeweler friends of ours that we knew. Turns out being honest matters in a jewelry store. And so they paid me 11 bucks an hour, and I remember sitting there for the first six months of our church plant, trying to get our church off the ground, and I remember sitting in the back of this jewelry store with a huge dream in my heart to see God do something incredible. And yet every day I would get up and I would get in my 1990 Buick Century that my grandfather left me when he died. And I would drive across the bridge into Cape Coral and I would sit in the back of this jewelry store changing out watch batteries. And I wasn't even good at it. And so many days I would sit there going, God, what are you doing? I have this huge dream in my heart. I want to see you do incredible things. What am I doing in the back of a jewelry store? Donkey mission. Donkey mission. See, before we can get to our greater mission, God will often take us on donkey missions. Maybe this morning you feel like you're on a donkey mission in some area of your life right now. Maybe it's at home. Maybe it's in your classroom at school or in your coursework. Maybe it's at work. You feel like you're on a donkey mission. Well, if so, listen, this morning, here's what I want to do. Very simply, I want to give you four truths about donkey missions. Four truths about donkey missions from our story with Saul, the first king over Israel. But before he was king, here's what happened. Look at this, verse 4. So Saul and his buddy take off to go find his dad's donkeys. And it says that they passed through the hill country of Ephraim and through the area around Shalisha. But they did not find them. They went on into the district of Shalim, but the donkeys were not there. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin, but they did not find them. Four truths. Maybe we want to write this down. Number one, donkey missions test our patience. Have you ever noticed that? Donkey missions test our patience, don't they? I mean, for Saul, this donkey mission is long. It's boring. It says he went from place to place to place. And when you study this, these places are not close together. Like, these are miles apart. He and his servant were gone for several days looking for these donkeys. And they looked, and they looked, and they looked. And they had no luck. They couldn't find them anywhere. Verse 5, when they reached the district of Zuf, Saul said to the servant who was with him, come on, man, let's just, you know what, let's just go back to my father. Let's just go home. Let's just give up on these darn donkeys. I just don't care enough. Let's just give up on the donkeys. Let's just go home. Because, and then look, Saul's ego kicks in. Because I'm kind of a big deal. And so if we don't go home soon, my dad's probably going to stop looking for the donkeys. And he's going to be worried about, well, well, me. Ever had your ego kick in on a donkey mission? Saul did. Saul's wandering around for days on end with his servant going, this isn't working. And they went to Zuf, and they went to Shalim, and they went to Shalisha, and they went to the territory of Benjamin. And everywhere he goes, there's no donkeys, no donkeys, no donkeys. And finally, he's like, you know what? I'm better than this. I don't need this darn assignment. I don't need this boss. I don't need this teacher. I don't need this coach. I'll just go do something else. I don't need this pastor. I'll just go do something else. Saul's ego kicked in. Why? Because a donkey mission will test our patience. When I was sitting in the back of that jewelry store, man, God was testing my patience big time. I had a big dream in my heart. And a donkey mission job was all I had to show for it. That's where Saul found himself wandering around aimlessly, getting more and more frustrated by the minute getting more and more uncomfortable, letting his ego, letting his pride start welling up. And maybe just maybe you're here today and that's where you find yourself. And God would be saying to you, hey, why don't you lay your pride down? Why don't you stop asking why and start asking what? 
Stop asking God, why is this happening? And start asking God, what am I supposed to be learning right now? Saul was on a donkey mission, and it was not going well. Donkey missions can test our patience. Verse 6, it continues on. But the servant replied to him, when Saul wants to give up and go home, whoa, 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 hang on, let's, let's don't give up quite yet. Look, in, the town, in, in this town, there's a man of God. He's highly respected, and everything he says comes true. Why don't we go there now, and maybe, just maybe, the man of God can tell us what's going on. And then look at verse 7, I love this. Saul said to his servant, if we go... Well, what are we going to give the man? I mean, the food in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. I mean, my dad didn't even set me up for success here. What do we have? Isn't it interesting that donkey missions bring out our excuses quicker than maybe just about anything? Saul just said, his buddy's like, well, no, 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 we can go and talk to the prophet. And Saul instantly is like, nope, it won't work. Nope, we can't do it. We don't have enough food. We don't have anything to give. We can't even pay the entrance fee. But thankfully, the servant was prepared. Verse 8, the servant answered him again. Look, he said, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God so that he will tell us the way to go. So tonight, by the way, at 5 o'clock, we're having a, 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 an extended time of, of service tonight. You all are aware of that, 5 p.m. on Sunday evenings. I'm going to break this down for us tonight. I'm going to talk about the servant in the story. So tonight's going to kind of be like a, a 1.2 or a 2.0 version of this because I want to really dissect the attitude in the heart of the servant who went with Saul on this donkey mission because there's so much for us in this story. I want to dig into that. But for now, here's the second truth. Check this out. Number two, donkey missions keep us humble. Donkey missions keep us humble. Put yourself in Saul's shoes for a second. Think about it. Here he is, Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome, right? Here he is, Mr. Awesome. Mr. God's got a plan and a destiny. God's hand of favor is on me. God's anointing is on me. And what does his buddy say? Man, let's go, let's go talk to the prophet of the day. Now, here's what you need to know. In the Old Testament, God would speak through a, a prophet, a, a preacher of the day, so to speak. And so when God wanted to speak to his people, he would speak through a prophet. Well, Samuel, as we're about to find out, was the prophet for the entire nation of Israel at this time. So watch this. Put yourself in Saul's shoes in the story. What does his buddy tell him? Hey, I think we should go talk to the ultimate voice of God for our nation. Just, if, by way of illustration, here's, let me see if I can illustrate this. Not that this person is the ultimate voice of God for our nation, but go with me. Illustratively, this would be like someone saying to you, hey, you lost your donkeys. Let's go to Rick Warren's house and ask Rick Warren if he's seen them. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, no, no. Hey, Pastor Rick, dude, I know you're working on like global peace projects and you're like awesome and trying to figure out like world peace. Quick question though, man. Any chance God spoke to you about our donkeys? How absolutely, utterly humiliating, right? Well, that's what Saul is doing. He has to go to the prophet of the day and be like, hey, yeah, my dad, my dad lost some donkeys. Can you help us? Be awful. Donkey missions will humble us, won't they? Donkey missions will humble us. But thankfully, Saul agrees. Look at verse 10. Good, Saul said. Let's go. Come on. Let's go see if we can find the prophet of the day. It can't hurt. So they set out for the town where the man of God was. Verse 11. As they were going up the hill to the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water. And they asked them, is the seer here? Now the word seer there is just, that's how they describe the prophet. He was the seer of the day. Verse 12. He is, the women said. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He's just come to our town today for the people have a sacrifice at the high place. As soon as you enter the town, so they start to describe to them how to get to this guy. As soon as you enter the town, you're going to find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people aren't going to begin eating until he comes because he's that big of a deal. He must offer the sacrifice. Afterward, those who are invited will eat. Go up now. You should be able to find him at about this time. Now what's happening here? Here's what's happening. Saul and his servant with him start to go move toward the town. And as they move toward the town, 
they get interrupted by, they come in contact with some young women. Remember, no detail in a Bible story is ever there by accident. Number three, donkey missions always test our integrity. Donkey missions always test our integrity. Again, put yourself in the story. Imagine being Saul. Saul and his servant, remember, these are tall, dark, and handsome. These are good-looking dudes. These are head and shoulders tall. These are linebackers, right? Like, these guys are awesome. And these guys have been on a journey for a long, long time, maybe two weeks. Haven't been around human contact, much less female contact. And all of a sudden, they come wandering across some young women. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. All of a sudden, it's like, what's up, ladies? And Saul's like, hey, we lost our donkeys. And the servant's like, no, tell them motorcycles, you idiot. <laughs> right, we lost our motorcycles. Isn't it interesting how temptation always rears its ugly head on a donkey mission? When you feel like you're wandering around aimless, when you feel like you're wandering around pointless, that's when our integrity starts to be tempted to slip, isn't it? That's when, that's when our, our shields go down. That's our shield of faith. That's when, that's when our guards go down. When we feel like we're wandering around aimlessly, when we're frustrated, when we're angry, when we're upset, when we feel like we want to quit. That's when the enemy will allow temptation to come wandering across our path. Our integrity is always tested in a donkey mission. And so many of us, every one of us could think of someone, couldn't we, who's quit a job, who's quit a ministry, who's quit a church, who's quit a small group, who's quit a, a marriage, who's walked out on their family. Why? Because they found himself on a donkey mission and Satan had a field day. So church, here's my question. What's your integrity worth? What's your integrity worth? Are you being tempted right now? Maybe it's sexual. Maybe it's that, that an old girlfriend or boyfriend on Facebook who suddenly messaged you out of nowhere. Sure, maybe. Maybe it's financial. Maybe you're being tempted right now to, to, to fudge the numbers on your taxes. Maybe you're, you're tempted right now to, to lie to the customer because they're not going to know anyway. Maybe you're tempted to cheat on that test and plagiarize because, well, everybody else is doing it. See, temptation always comes in the middle of a donkey mission. What's your integrity worth? What's your integrity worth? Sarah and I, a few years ago, were on a cruise. We love to cruise. That's one of our favorite ways to vacation. And when you live in Florida, you don't have to pay the airfare to get there. So it actually is rather affordable for us Floridians, and they have cool Florida discounts and so forth. And so uh, my wife always finds these incredible deals. So she and I were on a cruise ship uh, vacation uh, several years ago, and one of the stops was on, at the island of St. Thomas. And so St. Thomas, where the shopping is, is, is like a, a taxi ride away. And so we got off the ship, and we had all of our stuff, you know. And so, so we go to find this taxi. Now, when I say taxi, I'm being very generous, because what they really are are pickup trucks that with the bed ripped off and four like pews like you're sitting in right now, like four rows of chairs behind them, and then they charge like four dollars a person one way to anybody ridden on one of these taxis. You know what I'm talking? You know what I'm okay, great, thank you, awesome, I'm glad. Okay, so so Sarah and I get on this thing, and so I have a twenty dollar bill, and so I hand it to the driver, and everybody's piling in. We're all hot and sweaty, and the money's sticky and whatever, you know. So I hand him a twenty dollar bill. That's going to matter to the story in about thirty eight seconds. So I hand him a twenty dollar bill. And so he goes, he's collecting everything, and so he hands me back $12 and change. Well, as he hands it back to me, I take it, you know, thanks, and then he starts moving back to the other rows, and so I count it, and I realize that a five, an extra five, has stuck itself to one of the bills. So instead of giving me back $12, he gives me back $17. So as he comes walking back toward the front, I go, hey, man, hey. And he turns around, I go, hey, you gave me an extra $5 bills here, and I handed it back to him. So he's like, oh, thanks. And he grabs it, you know, and he gets in the bed of the truck or whatever, the driver's seat, and he, he takes off. And as soon as he shuts the door, this random stranger dude that was on our cruise ship sitting right in front of me, he goes, unbelievable. And he turns around. And he looks at me, he goes, unbelievable. And I go, what? And he goes, 
You gave that dude five bucks back. Man, I'd have kept it. And I just looked right at him and I go, yeah, my integrity is worth more than five dollars. What's your integrity worth? Is it worth more than the $32 that you can round down on the bill? Is it worth more than the $158 from that one invoice that didn't get right? Is it worth more than the $1,020 on your tax re return? See, donkey missions test our integrity. And hopefully, as a follower of Jesus, our integrity is not for sale. Saul finds himself face to face on his donkey mission with an integrity test. These beautiful young women come walking across he and his buddy's path and how easy it would have been for them to go, you know what, forget the donkeys, man. Let's go hang out with these ladies. Let's go grab some lunch. How easy it would have been to give up on his integrity in the midst of a donkey mission. And can I challenge you today? I just believe this is a word for some of you. I believe that there are some of you, and you're being tempted. You're in the middle of a donkey mission right now, and you've been struggling, and you've been even depressed and discouraged because of, of the, this, the, you feel like the, the mission you're on right now is not going well, and, and it's got you frustrated like Saul. And integrity tests are knocking at your door. Can I just challenge you and encourage you today? Listen, don't answer. Don't answer. Let it go by. Let it go by. Here's the reason why. Because you're closer to your destiny than you think you are. Check this out. Check this out. Verse 14. They went up to the town, and as they were entering it, there was Samuel, the prophet, coming toward them on his way up to the high place. Verse 15. Now... The day before, everyone say the day before. Okay, so this is a flashback moment in Scripture. So Saul and his servant come walking down the road. They see Samuel, and then Samuel sees them, and then boom, verse 15, flashback. Look, now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. Then verse 16 shows us the flashback. 24 hours earlier, about this time tomorrow, God says to the prophet, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people for their cry has reached me. So what's happening? While Saul is on a donkey mission, God is arranging his greater mission. Verse 17, back to present moment. When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man that I spoke to you about. He's the one who's going to govern and lead my people. Number four, write it down. Donkey missions are always about something bigger than donkeys. Donkey missions are always about something bigger than donkeys. Can I get an amen? amen. Donkey missions are always about something greater than donkeys. Saul couldn't see it at the time. But God was arranging his steps. And if he had given up on that donkey mission, arguably he never would have reached his greater mission. So what about us? What about us? Are you on a donkey mission? Do you feel like there's some thing in your life that's not going well? It feels kind of pointless. It feels kind of worthless. And you've been tempted to give up. Well, listen, church, I just want to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up on your donkey mission. Because your donkey mission is what will lead you to your greater mission. We just never know. We have to be humble enough, patient enough, and faithful enough to trust God while we're on the donkey missions of our life. So will you trust him? Will you trust him in the midst of your donkey mission? Three quick challenges. Write these down. Three quick challenges about donkey missions. Number one, stop spending so much time worrying about your greater mission and start, just start being faithful to your donkey mission. Just start being faithful. 
So often we can get so caught up and our world is so, so pressuring of this, of what's the big idea, what's the greater mission, what's the bigger thing. Listen, just be faithful where you are. God is our promoter. All those years ago, sitting in that jewelry store, I'm so thankful I was faithful to work in that jewelry store because it taught me so much. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Number two, second challenge, don't let anything be beneath you. Don't let anything be beneath you. The, the fastest path to promotion in God's economy is serving. Just be faithful. Do you know, who, you know the kind of people that get promoted around here? People who are faithful. You know, do you know the kind of people that get promoted in your workplace? People who are faithful to just serve the mission. Great, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Serve the donkey mission of the Father and watch how God will line it up with your greater mission. And then final challenge, number three, stop seeing things as pointless and start seeing things as practice. Stop seeing things as pointless and start seeing things as practice. Real quick vulnerability story for you here. So several months ago, I was going through a, a rough patch in terms of our leadership and just some organizational stressors that were on us in our church. And I found myself rolling my eyes that someone would walk in my office or even worse, they'd walk out of my office and here's what I'd do, I'd go. Anybody ever rolled your eyes? Come on, you know what I'm talking And the Lord convicted me and said, hey, Matt, stop rolling your eyes. Some of you, you need to stop rolling your eyes. Stop rolling at your eyes when your wife leaves the room. That hit. Stop rolling your eyes at your teenagers. Stop rolling your eyes at your boss. Stop seeing things as pointless. And start seeing them as practice. Today, we get to practice. Today, we get a practice. Yeah, but I don't like my territory. Then you get a practice for a better territory. Yeah, well, I don't like the state of my, my relationship with my spouse right now. Well, then good news, you get to practice being a better husband or wife. See it as practice. Stop seeing it as pointless and start seeing everything as practice. And watch how God will arrange your donkey missions to your greater mission. Thanks for the opportunity today to share the Word of God with you. And if you're watching today and you realize in your heart you're not right with God or you're away from the Lord and you say, I want to be right with God, you see, there's two things that are necessary. The first one is for you to surrender your life to Jesus and you need to receive the forgiveness that he has for you. And if you say, I want to pray a prayer and I want to surrender my life to Jesus and I want to receive the forgiveness he has for me, would you bow your head, repeat this prayer, make these words your own. Just say, oh God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe his blood paid for my sins. And I believe that he rose again. And I give him all of my heart and all of my life. I surrender to Jesus. I'm going to live for him. And I receive the forgiveness that you have for me. I thank you I'm forgiven. My past is gone. I'm a part of your family. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, God heard your prayer, and you are right with God. And I want you to keep growing spiritually. And because of that, I wrote a book, and I want to send it to you absolutely free of charge. All the information is right there on your screen. You can download it absolutely free. If you can't download it and need a hard copy, contact us. We'll get you that free of charge. Hey, we're praying for you. We love you, and God bless. If you just prayed that prayer with Pastor Dwayne, you are making one of the best decisions of your life. We are so happy for you. To receive a copy of Pastor's free book, you can go to walkingbyfaith.tv and request a copy of this book be mailed to you. Or you can download it right there instantly. Either way, it's absolutely free. You can find today's message available for free on our app where you can watch it right there or download it and save it for later. You can also follow along with Pastor's scriptures and share images on your social media. Or you can find today's program and others at walkingbyfaith.tv. Just click on Watch Latest Program. And as always, you can purchase a copy in the WBF store. We are so excited to let you know about an awesome opportunity to help impact the world with Walking by Faith. 
Due to the generosity of some of our partners, today any gift that you give will be matched. If God is using this ministry to strengthen your faith, please consider making a donation today and help us make use of these matching funds while they're available. If you need someone to pray with or God is just doing amazing things in your life, we would love to hear about it. You can contact us by phone, email, through our app, or on Facebook or Instagram. Next week, Pastor Dwayne has a great message for us on what it takes to be a servant of the Lord. We'll see you then.